All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Porter, and I'm the Education Coordinator with the Central PA Chamber of Commerce. It's great to have you all join us today for uh, the first segment of our Central PA Career Fair, our nonprofit segment. Um, at this time, um, I, was, I want to make everyone aware that we are going to record this session, so that way we have it for um, any students that couldn't join us today or um, anybody that maybe maybe wants to review the session in the future, if they would like a, like a copy of the link, I can send that to them as well. Um, so at this time, I would like to introduce our first speaker. Um, her name is Kelly. She's from the Greater Susquehanna Valley YMCA here locally in Milton. Kelly, go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Kelly Bates. I am the membership director and fiscal assistant here at the Milton YMCA, which is part of the Greater Susquehanna Valley. Um, we have a branch in Sunbury as well as a branch in Lewisburg, the Miller Center. Um, the Y is very unique in it's a nonprofit, which we have a lot of nonprofits in our area, but there are so many different areas in the Y. Um, we have our building services, which just takes care of our building, maintenance issues, cleaning, and things like that. We have our aquatics department, um, and within that, you could be a lifeguard, which you could start at, I believe it's age 15. Let me double check that. Yes. You can be 15 years old to become a lifeguard. There's just a class that you need to take. Um, and that's actually how I started with the Y back in 1997. I've been with the Y for 23 years and I have grown within the organization, which is, which is pretty great. Um, you can teach swimming lessons, you can teach aqua classes, um, or just be a lifeguard. Um, then we have our child care department, so I know there are a lot of schools in our area that have the CTE program um, with early childhood education, um, which is great if you want to be working with children, that's a great thing to get into. Um, and then we actually will take interns here at the Y working with our, our um, child care program. Um, some degrees you can have with that early childhood you can have elementary education special education um, they have different credentials you can get um, just child care credentials there's a lot of options in that area if children are a passion of yours um, we have our member services which is what i'm in charge of the membership department and within that um, i have people working at our front desk you help people sign up for memberships you help me um, with tracking uh, different funding you help me track different um, just different monies that come in so accounting if you if that's something that you like um, the fiscal side that I also do collections things like that um, and then we also have our fitness department so if aerobics classes are something that you're interested in or um, we have what's called silver sneakers where you're working with some of our older members um, it's it's a pretty unique um, a department there as well. So within the Y, there's so many different opportunities for you. Um, and it was really good for me when I was 15 or 16 years old because it gave me a way to be in one place but have so many different options to see what's there. Um, and we really are a family here, which is, which is great. Um, but if it's something that you're interested in, you can definitely start with us while you're still 15, 16 years old, uh, working in aquatics. Um, we have on Friday nights, we have our TGIF. I don't know if any of you, when you were in elementary school, early middle school came to that. We still offer that every other Friday. Even if you're not looking for a job per se, we're always looking for volunteers, which is another great way to help your community. Um, being a nonprofit, we're very community-based. We That's what we pride ourselves on, um, is bringing in everyone to the community. So we would love to see you here. Um, even if you just want to take a look around, come see me, and we can explain some of the opportunities you can have here at the Y. So, yeah. Well, thank you, Kelly. Um, You're and, welcome. Uh, hang out for a little bit. Um, I am going to have a question and answer session at the very okay. end for all of our panelists if any students have questions. Perfect. Thank you. All right.
And next up, I have Michelle from Pennsylvania Free Enterprise Week. All right. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Um, yes, my name is Michelle. I am with um, I'm the vice president of education relations for the Foundation for Free Enterprise Education, uh, which is our, our the name of our, our parent organization. Uh, but we're, most people are familiar with our, our award winning programming that we offer to students throughout the state of Pennsylvania, uh, primarily our Pennsylvania Free Enterprise Week program, uh, better known to some students as PFEW. Uh, we also run the stock market game throughout the state of Pennsylvania as as well as we have our speaker series uh, program um, that we have uh, since started here this summer uh, due to the, uh, the pandemic uh, and we weren't able to run our programming this summer. So we tried to bring a little taste of our, our summer program PFEW through our speaker series. But I am here today to talk about PFEW, Pennsylvania Free Enterprise Week, um, which uh, for some of our attendees here today, maybe are familiar with it. I see some familiar names on the screen. So thank you for joining us. And a huge uh, shout out to the Central PA Chamber, uh, Michael, TJ, and the rest of the gang there for putting on this wonderful event. I know usually we like to meet in person, uh, um, you know, at the gymnasium uh, to to have this wonderful career fair, but we're glad that you were able to, you know, put this together uh, virtually for our students and our educators. But um, for those of you that aren't familiar, just to kind of give you a very, again, brief overview, uh, Pennsylvania Free Enterprise Week is a summer opportunity, believe it or not. It's a summer program for high school students. Uh, so calling all sophomores and juniors out there, uh, if you are currently in 10th grade or 11th grade, you are eligible to participate in PFEW next summer in 2021. Uh, and I know it is only November. I know it sounds kind of crazy to be thinking about next summer. Uh, we know we're in the middle of a pandemic. A lot is going on, but we are planning for a very safe and healthy in-person program programming for next summer. So we hope that those of you that are sophomores and juniors who are with us here today, um, you know, share the word, spread the information to your friends that maybe weren't able to join us here today, but a unique opportunity uh, for you to gather in central Pennsylvania. We are, we are headquartered in Erie, Pennsylvania, in the northwest part of the state here, but our program is statewide uh, and we run it in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, which I know is not too far from where most of our attendees are here today joining us from. Uh, but uh, it, it's, uh, it's held in um, Williamsport, as I mentioned, at Lycoming College. We also work with uh, the Pennsylvania College of Technology. Those are our two host campuses. So it's, it's an opportunity for students um, to get away for um, you know a week in the summer. That's all our program is. It is one week in the summer, and we actually have four different sessions for students to choose from. Um, those sessions do run throughout the month of July and into early August. So we know summer's busy. A lot of students have jobs and other activities and things that they're involved in. So we do allow you to choose you know which week you want to go and depending on the week you choose um, we'll determine which campus you stay at like Homing College or Penn College but it's really just a nice opportunity to you know get a college experience for our sophomores and juniors you know um, many of them are kind of teetering not sure what they want to do after high school some maybe are considering college maybe you're considering a trade school technical school maybe the military you know at some point you might be out in the workforce or you likely will be out in the workforce uh, so this is an opportunity for you to regardless of what path you may choose to take to, to get Get together, get a college experience, and really just, you know, network and socialize, meet with students from all over the state of Pennsylvania. Um, generally, we have about 2,200 students that participate each summer. Um, they're not there all week, or each week. Uh, we have, you know, each week there's about 450 students generally who participate, but, um, but certainly you get to meet a lot of people who are your own age from across the state. Uh, but what you do, let's get into that a little bit, uh, you actually get to run a business throughout this week. You get a, real, a taste of what it's like to run a company. Uh, we're going to divide the 450 students up into teams. Um, generally, there's about 16, 17, 18 students in a team. And together, you're going to be the executive management team of a corporation. You're going to run the company for the week. Uh, you will actually elect your own CEO of your company, a vice president, different managers within the company. So some great, I want to say, leadership opportunities for our fine leaders out there. I uh, want a chance to really show off and showcase their great leadership skills. You could be the CEO of your company. Uh, it's a manufacturing business that you're going to be running. Uh, so um, you'll be producing and selling a product. You'll be uh, developing a product from scratch. Uh, we had teams uh, previously who've designed things like uh, 
let's see, we had teams that designed hair care products, jewelry, candy, um, you know, just a wide range of different products. And you as the executives get to create that product um, and you market it. You design a web page, a TV commercial, a radio commercial, you design billboard ads. Uh, we have a really fun computer simulation that we do uh, where you actually get to price your product and you get to determine how many employees your company is going to hire, what you're going to spend on research and development and, and, and supplies to make your product. So in one week, you are going to make some of the exact same decisions that real business executives make in the real business world. Um, and of course, you are on a college campus, so you'll have access to the campus facilities, their fitness room, their gym, their pool, their basketball courts and volleyball courts. Um, so it's not all work, uh, but certainly it is a competition. You know, with 450 students there, multiple teams who are all going to be running a business just like you, you're going to be competing to see which company could be the most successful by the end of the week. And again, it's one week, you get there on a Sunday and you go home the following um, Friday. So uh, it's a one week program. Uh, and then uh, the nice thing is it is, it, the businesses and organizations um, throughout the state of Pennsylvania um, provide sponsorships for students to participate. Uh, so the only cost for the students for the week is a registration fee of $295. And we do offer financial aid for students um, who are in, you know, in need of that. So you can certainly contact us. Um, as I wrap things up here today, um, I do, we do have applications. You can stop and see your guidance counselor at your school. You could also go onto our website, pfew.org, and you can submit an application there. We are accepting applications. We have over 800 students who are, have already um, enrolled for next summer. A number of those students are transferred from this past summer when we couldn't run it. Um, but uh, due to the CDC guidelines, we do expect um, you know, that we'll have some limitations in the size of the program. So bottom line, get your applications in right away. The spaces we do expect to, to fill up very quickly here. So um, that's Pennsylvania Free Enterprise Week in a nutshell. Again, take a look at our website. There's some additional information and some videos and things on there as well. And I will stick around. Uh, Michael, for uh, some Q&A. If any of our participants have any questions, be happy to answer them for you. So thank you all so much. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for your kind words about the chamber and, uh, and our staff. We appreciate uh, all you do. Thank you. Yeah. All right. And next up, we have Jen, Jennifer Rempe of WVIA. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jennifer Rempe, and I am with your local public media station, TV and radio, that being WVIA. We're based in Pittston, over where WBRE and WNEP are based, uh, but I have worked here remotely in the Susquehanna Valley for three years now, and I'm in their underwriting department, <clears throat> which is basically sales. Uh, but because we're a nonprofit and we're a non-commercial radio and TV station, we don't call it sales. Um, I'm actually in the fundraising department um, and we call it underwriting. And so what I do is I go out and I talk to businesses and organizations, nonprofit and for-profit alike, and determine if we can help them with their advertising and marketing needs by providing them with, a, with a, an advertising campaign on TV or radio that allows them to, to market whatever kind of business they have. Um, and the bonus is that um, if a company isn't interested in advertising, perhaps they don't need advertising or they, you know, just, they're not ready. <clears throat> I'm able to ask them, well, would you like to support your local media, your local public media station? Um, we do a lot of things that regular TV and radio stations don't do. Uh, we have a whole entire education department that works at WVIA. Um, a couple teachers um, that are that are uh, working at WVIA that run our education programs. Uh, we have a couple. We have a grant writer on staff who used to be a teacher. Um, our production department is very large. Uh, we actually um, have a movie making arm of WVIA that. Um, they, they, one of the movies that they worked on a couple years ago was uh, the Chesapeake um, IMAX film with Jeff Corwin. Uh, we were the film crew for that, for that um, movie um, that, that, that played in, in um, IMAX theaters uh, across the country. And it was about the, the watersheds of the Chesapeake Bay and the health of the, of the, of the environment. 
as it relates to the Chesapeake Bay. And um, we also have a uh, obviously a very large um, broadcast department. We have on-air hosts. Um, PBS and NPR uh, have been ranked for about 16 or 17 years as the most trusted news source. Um, and this election year uh, was no different in that we saw a ton of our ratings go through the roof because people are kind of tired of the rhetoric of, um, uh, you know, the, the CNN, the MSN, all of those um, news outlets. Um, and NPR and PBS are both known for um, as down the middle reporting as you can get. And I know the, the one thing that that I love about NPR and PBS, and I watched PBS last night as as the as the election unfolded, and um, you know people are are waiting um, the, um, the 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 calmness in which the the integrity in which we report um, is is what I love about NPR and PBS. Um, and the beautiful thing about being in sales is uh, this is my first sales job ever. Um, I've been in fundraising my whole life. Uh, I've worked for one for-profit company uh, years ago. I've worked in uh, surfing, <coughs> the surfing industry. I've worked in corrections. Um, I've worked in a lot of fundraising and marketing positions. And um, the one thing that I want to instill in you is, um, and I feel very, very strongly about this, is that you can go out and you, if you decide that you want to do something, you can do anything that you want to do. Um, unless you're training to be like an engineer or, you know, a, a doctor, um, you can, ch it's okay to not know what you want to do. It, it's okay. Um, but the most important thing is to experience different things. Um, my daughter attended PFEW uh, a couple years ago and, um, she still doesn't know she's 19 years old. She still doesn't know what she wants to do and that's okay. So go out and experience, get different kinds of jobs and be okay with not knowing because you can, you have lots of choices and you have lots of time. Um, and I'll stick around Michael uh, for any questions about WVIA and sales and or fundraising. All right. That sounds great. Thank you so much, Dan. All right. And our next presenter is Jack <laughs> of um, FSA. Hi, um, I'm not sure if you can hear me, but hopefully you can. Um, so I'm with Family Service Association of Northeastern Pennsylvania. I'm our, grant, I'm our grant writer and outreach specialist. So briefly what that means is I do a lot of writing and a lot of talking to people trying to bring in funds. If you're in the nonprofit world, almost all of us, no matter what hat we're wearing, are in some way engaged in the fundraising process because we don't have a product we're really selling we're usually doing something that's kind of for the good of humanity or the good of the community as a whole. So we kind of have to rely on that community to bring in the funds to allow us to pay people to do those things. Um, Family Service Association is a lot of caseworkers, which means if you're going for counseling, um, psychology, social work, any of those sort of, you might end up as a caseworker. Um, and within our organization, that can mean you're doing a lot of different things. It, it is all helping people, but you might be helping people who are dealing with addiction. Maybe you want to be a counselor and just talk therapy with people who are going through marital stresses, um, stresses related to politics. Maybe they have a mental illness. Um, maybe it's just as simple as they need someone to talk to because they don't have that in their life at that point in time. Um, we also run the PA 2 and one helpline, which is if you're going through any sort of critical situation, if you don't know where your food is gonna come from for the day. If you don't have a house over your head, um, you can call them and then they will try to refer you to the resource that will help you kind of with that situation. Um, unfortunately, they do deal with suicide and sort of those situations quite a bit. So if someone's feeling that sort of way, they can call and hopefully it, it does save lives. We've had lives where we can call an ambulance, we can call the police to send someone out to kind of stop them from whatever they were thinking about doing. Um, and then we also just have things that are as simple as dealing with adolescents who are maybe in a place where they're friends with the wrong people or they're getting into dangerous situations um, and they maybe don't have that parent in their life to tell them stop or try to take care of them. 
Um, and so instead the caseworker kind of, they step into that role of being the person to say, you know, do your homework, don't do drugs, um, you know, let's help you get a job. I, it's kind of interesting to me that a lot of those adolescents in particular wouldn't know how to apply for a job. They don't know to show up to an interview dressed in a very presentable fashion. Um, so in that case, the caseworkers can step in and sort of help them through that early process. Um, and so that's why I say being a caseworker could mean a lot of different things for you. Um, and then there's also just the business side of it. We have a CEO, we have a human resources person, we have accountants. Maybe you wanna wear a whole lot of different hats. You could be our administrative assistant who does everything from event planning to keeping the schedule to answering the phones all the way to sometimes helping with the accounting or the writing. Um, we have marketing people because you have to get your message out there. So um, when you go of thinking to work for really any nonprofit, whatever background, whatever you decide to go to college for, there's a good chance that you could end up in the nonprofit world. Um, so that's sort of everything I have to say. I'll stick around with this question and answer portion. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you to the chamber, they're awesome. Chambers work with us a lot. <laughs> so they're, they're great. They help us get our message out there. Well, thank you. All right, and our next presenter is Brenda of Tony's Custom Tailor Shop, which is actually a for-profit business, but um, and she might speak about that a little bit, but on top of that, um, she's also a dedicated volunteer in many aspects, and uh, we brought her in to speak about that today. Hi, I, uh, am I on? not quite sure if I am. What, one sec, you're cutting in and out a little bit. Am I? Okay. I'm not quite sure if I'm on or not. I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm the owner of Tony's Tailor Shop and I really, really want to thank the chamber because I have been with the chamber for a very long time and uh, have participated in a actual fashion show for them um, throughout for this event and um, enjoyed it so much and enjoyed uh, dressing the individuals with clothes and uh, getting them from just like the Salvation Army and other places. Uh, so to show you that how to dress for interviews and to show you that you don't have to spend a lot of money to, uh, to look good. And also I've dressed the, the gentlemen with tuxedos and let them feel good about it. And um, because that's just what I do for prom and everything like that. However, I also am um, not only as a not as a profitable business on my side times. I also uh, love volunteering, and I also love doing nonprofitable things, which is very important. And it's important for every individual to be involved in a bunch of different things. Um, it's not all about making money. It's not all about. Um, you know, getting rewarded. It's, there is different ways of getting rewarded. Um, getting rewarded in the heart is a bigger reward than getting a paycheck. Um, a, uh, I started out um, actually uh, years ago uh, when I worked for different companies. Um, I was involved in, and I was very fortunate to have a company send me to a leadership program. And in that leadership program, I learned several things about how important it is to go and help out and become a leader to nonprofitable businesses and nonprofitable events and all kinds of things to get involved. And um, if you ever get a pro uh, get an opportunity to get involved doing something like that, that is amazing. It is it's very fun. Uh, you get to network with individuals. You get to meet different people that you would have never met. And you get to share your story. Their stories are shared with you. So it is very interesting. And, it, and they have other ways of you getting involved in, um, like, community events. Okay? Am I still on? Yeah. I, okay. Okay. I see a little thing coming up. It says about my about some speaker or something like that. So um, to to not rattle on about this, um, what I did is I actually got involved in a very rewarding event that I'm doing. It's called the Night to Shine. 
And what that is, is a really cool event, which is for disabled and uh, mentally challenged children. It's the event. Um, I had involved in that. And how I'm pretty much involved is, um, we do a, a, um, a, just, we do like a little bit of a boutique where I get the clothes, the dresses, and we get the tuxedos. And I do the alterations. And then what we do is I also am on the uh, greeting committee when, when the event starts. So I get to go through the whole process. I get to see how they're making, make them look good. And then when they come and they look good, I get to greet them to walk in the door. Uh, so the book type of things is, you know, of course it's not paid, it's not credible, but it makes me feel good. And it's all about just volunteering and feeling good. So uh, I don't think that everyone needs a check. I think everyone needs to feel good. So please try and get involved in everything you can because it looks really good on your resume and it, for you kids to actually go out and get a job because a lot of companies would really like to see you get involved. And if you need any other places besides the, uh, besides the foundation, besides the YMCA, besides uh, WVIA, and also in your family services to get involved, ask the chamber, and I'm sure they can fill you in on a lot of different places where you could get involved as well. And I thank you for allowing me to be on this because I just enjoy being with the chamber and working with individuals. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Brenda. Um, yeah. And to what she said, um, absolutely. I would say as the Central PA Chamber, um, we have over or right at 500 members currently. Um, and we co connect with nonprofits, for profits alike. Um, and there were so many people that just unfortunately, especially with the pandemic and everything, um, were just not able to join us um, virtually um, nor in person um, if, we, if we would have been able to do that. Um, so there are a lot of other people who have lots of opportunities for each of you. Uh, and we'd love to be able to help connect you with those, with those individuals if, if um, that desire is there. Um, but at this time, um, I am going to open it up for question and answer. Um, if anybody representing the students or if the students themselves have questions specifically for any of our presenters, um, you're welcome to unmute yourself and ask the question or um, type it in the chat to me and I will um, ask, ask our panelists for you. My question is for Kelly. Um, so what are other opportunities for 16 year olds at the Y? Um, so we have lifeguarding, teaching swimming lessons. Um, we can, um, we have our child watch program, which is um, when parents or, you know, not all families are parents, grandparents, aunt and uncles have children. When families are coming in to work out, um, their children can be dropped off. We have a little, basically like a little babysitting area that they can go in. Um, you just have to be 16 for that. Um, if you're in the CTE early childhood program at your school, um, you can actually work in our, um, our school age department um, and work with the kiddos that way. But you, because you're under 18 and still in high school, you'd have to be in that program. Um, that's just a state regulation. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with anything with childcare, but they have some pretty strict guidelines that we have to follow. Um, and then some other areas, um, I believe, um, if you don't want to be a lifeguard, um, you could still teach swimming lessons and things like that. But if you want to type your information, I can get some more specifics on that and definitely email you. I could call you um, if you're interested and get you some more details. And then we can chat separately to kind of find out what you're really interested in and, and make sure that uh, we can, get, you know, find a good fit for you. That's a Thank you. Place. You're welcome. Thank you, that was a great question.
right. Anybody else have any questions? All right, so I'll ask, this is for all of our panelists. I have a question for each of you. Um, if you all just wanna respond in the order that you presented. Um, um, what would be one tip you would give to a student uh, when going in for an interview, whether it's for a non-for-profit interview or for a, or for a for-profit interview? Oh man, that's a good question. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely just be yourself. Don't try to put on another persona of what you think they want you to be or what you think they want to hear. Absolutely speak from your heart. Speak if you're passionate about it, let them know. Try not to be somebody else or conform who you are to what you think they want because then they're going to get a different idea. I did that right out of college and I was miserable at my first job because I tried to make myself who I thought they wanted and wasn't true to myself. And I'll be honest, I was miserable. So please be yourself and you will shine through and you will find that right position. Um, just just be you. That's my number one advice going into an interview is stick with what you're passionate about um, and it will definitely shine through and they will see that. Okay. Uh, that's a great advice, Kelly. Uh, and wow, uh, first and foremost, I would say um, arrive prior to this time of the scheduled interview. Um, give yourself plenty of time, maybe even do a dry run beforehand so you know where you're going, but you should at for sure arrive uh, 10 to 15 minutes prior to the interview. Uh, when you go into the interview, look the person in the eye, shake their hand, um, likewise, at the very end, thank them for the, the opportunity, again, shake their hand. And the other big thing I think for me um, would be to do your research prior to going in for the interview, get to know the organization a little bit and ask questions. Um, that shows um, not only that you've done your research, but that you're really, you know, interested in, um, you know, um, you're interested. Um, and um, yeah, those are, I would say those are some of my key advice and tips for those looking, um, you know, pursuing an interview. Yeah. Hi, um, I would definitely dovetail on what Michelle was just saying. Um, I think the most important thing is to figure out why you want the job. Even if it's, you know, going to work at McDonald's or Burger King, or you're becoming a lifeguard. Um, and be honest with, with the interviewer and, you know, tell them why you want the job, because that is going to allow them to see you and maybe make a better imprint you know, in, in terms of a first impression. And um, again, it's about finding your passion and it may seem like I, I just need a job. Like I just need a job, I'm in high school and I wanna make money. But there has to be a, something a little bit deeper than that. So when you're, when you're thinking about that, you know, even, you know, and practice saying it um, um, on your way to the interview or practice with somebody, you know, so that you get kind of get over the nervousness um, and here's a tip that somebody told me a million years ago. <clears throat> if you're nervous on the way to an interview, the way to get over that, that nervousness is put a song on your phone on like play Pandora or play the radio in your car. And if you sing along, that nervousness goes away. So that's my tip. Okay. Oh, sorry. I wasn't sure of the order. Um, yeah. In terms of tips for a job interview, I think honestly be on time, but obviously life happens. So if you can't be there on time, call ahead. 
you know, a lot of interviewers are not going to hold it against you if there was a traffic accident, if, you know, something went wrong in your family or your life. The only way they're going to really be offended is if you don't tell them, because then you're not respecting their time. Um, so showing respect for their time can honestly be more important than if you had been on time, because they then they know they're hiring somebody who, when life happens, is going to respect sort of the company and the clients and do their very best to make sure things work out. Um, so that would be my advice there, just because I've had times where I was late to a job interview by no fault of my own. And I think it really saved me to just be like, hey, I'm just sitting here and there's been an accident that was very unpredictable. So I'll hopefully be there soon. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. And Brenda. Yes, of course, you know, you're going to hear from me by dress appropriately. Of course, you're going to hear that. So uh, make sure you dress appropriately. Uh, you know, make sure that you're uh, all you all you have all buttons on your shirts, and they're all buttoned, and your shirts are pressed, and your pants are pressed, and things are tucked in, and shoes are appropriately tied or whatever. Um, and one important thing I always tell my daughter, and she's 26, and I still tell her this, if you go for an interview, after your interview, go home and make sure you send a thank you note. Um, whether it is an email, if that's the way they're contacting you, or you just pop a little note in the mail and say thank you very much for your time. That means more than anything, whether you get the job or you don't, it still is thanking them for their time because everyone is so busy and you, that makes you stand out. That's great advice. Um, thank you all for all of your input. Um, and thank you all for all of your, all your presentations to the students today over the nonprofit industry. Um, at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and conclude this portion of our career fair. Um, for those of you, you student-wise that are gonna be joining us for the next one, please go ahead and um, you can go ahead and join the next Zoom, and I'll be there shortly. Um, thank you all so much, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. See ya.